Basically, most of the time, you're gonna have squat and deads twice a week. There's also optional lifts. The thing you gotta know about Johnny's program is that it's kind of taking the theory of block periodization. Each week is kind of considered its own wave. There's not a ton of total stress, especially here in the fifth week. What's going on guys? Garrett Blevins here again today to finish up the Johnny Candido two-part series. So if you haven't watched the bench progressions summary, definitely check out that video. Also, I'm gonna be talking about stress index today. So I have a video, how good is your program? That covers the stress index and the idea, the concept of what it is, but that's how I'm gonna assess how does this progression stack up to some other programs that are out there. So if you haven't watched that video, that'll help you understand the end of this one. Um, Johnny Candido, great lifter, put this program out. Definitely go to his website, get the PDF if you're thinking about running this. Make sure you read through the PDF. Uh, it's free, you can just download it, it's awesome. Same with the program, it's there in Excel, you can download it, you can use it, and if you're using this program and if you can afford it, definitely give him a donation. Dude's super cool, gives it away for free, gives you the opportunity to donate. If you're not a miner, I think he says if you're a miner, like don't even worry about it, but if you've got the money, throw him a couple of bucks, uh, it'll help him out, he deserves it. A lot of people have run this program to great success, and I, He's worth it. So come on, we all love Johnny, right? Um, before I continue on, I wanna thank Evolve AI as a team. We decided to sponsor this series and talk about these different programs, talk about the training that undergirds them, and hopefully let you guys know out there how to know if you've got a good program or if your program sucks and you need to change. Uh, selfless plug, Evolve AI uses the stress index as well as scientific principles for training to make sure that you get an individualized program just for you that you can use to stay on the gains even as your volume landmarks or your uh, tolerance to certain intensities changes, the program's gonna help keep you on the gain. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely give us a, give us a shot, you know? Got a two week free trial going right now, go for it. Without further ado, what you came for, the Candido six week squat and deadlift progression review. So basically most of the time, you're gonna have squat and deads twice a week. There's also optional lifts. Now Johnny says in his PDF, Basically, he sticks with the squat and the deads. He finds that that's enough to tax all of his lower body. He doesn't need to add additional exercises on. However, if you are, he gives two main flavors, which is the explosive lower body, and no, not that type of explosive lower body, uh, but, and uh, hypertrophy lower body. And basically what's going on here is you're gonna do three sets if it's explosive, if it's jumps, if it's that sort of stuff. You're gonna do four reps per set for all three uh, of the sets for whatever exercises. These exercises you're gonna do on your squat and uh, or your lower body days. So you end up doing both of these twice a week. Hypertrophy is gonna be for your standard three sets of eight to 12. Again, you're hitting that up twice a week. That's gonna happen every single week, except for the third week where they're dropped out. Um, and then obviously like the deload test week, you're gonna have to make that your own uh, and figure it out. But other than that, it's always the same, so I didn't write it four times. Now, in terms of the progressions of the weeks, the thing you gotta know about Johnny's program is that it's kind of taking the theory of block periodization where you have a block of training that's working on a certain adaptation or certain ability, and you're chaining those together within block periodization to hopefully accomplish the biggest possible peak. Well, this is a six week program geared towards intermediate, so there's not this time for all these different blocks or all these waves. Instead, each week is kind of considered its own wave. So um, you've got muscular conditioning for the first two weeks. The first one is uh, medium level muscular conditioning where the intensities are a little lower and heightens up, it jacks up the, uh, the intensity a little bit on week two. Then you go to uh, what he calls linear max OT, it's overload training. And this is basically getting you ready and, and starting to bridge the gap from the hypertrophy or the more volume-based work that you were doing into the heavier weights that you're going to get used to. Again, it moves into a weight, heavyweight acclimation, and then a pretty heavy volume reduction in the high intensity strength week as well. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. This leads into week six, where you can either, week six could just rotate back into week one, use your updated maxes from the max tests, uh, figure out what your four rep max is or however many reps you accomplish, and you just run back into it. You could deload and then repeat, or you could move into and use the sixth week as a test. If you have a meet on that Saturday or something like that, you just roll through straight into the test. Um, so squat one, deadlift one, the protocols in terms of the intensity are very close across the board. 
You're going to have more sets of squatting than you are of deadlifting, as you see here. That's common in many programs. It's basically the same thing where deadlifts are very fatiguing. So a lot of people stay away from that volume. They spend more time with squatting. That's true in like starting strength, uh, strong lifts. Uh, strong lifts has some more now. Starting strength, um, five, three, one has a little bit of that sometimes going in, depending on how you run it. Texas method as well, where you're replacing with power cleans just depends on how you're going to do it. Um, and how you're going to run with what variations, but a little bit less on the deadlift volume. Um, it's going to increase over where you're going to be doing a, uh, a max rep with it, depending on the results of that, you're going to have certain amounts of back offsets. So for this one, where max reps of, uh, of 10, depending on the number of reps that you get on that test, you're either going to do 10 triples. That's 10 sets. Yeah. 10 sets of three or eight sets of three or five sets of three or no sets of three with 10 pounds less than whatever you were using. Um, so the protocol is there just to make sense of what is going on with MR. Um, you are going to swap over to a deadlift variation at various points, and you're going to have to feel out how heavy to do that. It could be like kind of that RP seven to eight range for what you do there, but you're actually going to get away from the competition lift. Again, I already talked about how there's a fear of deadlifting and deadlifting too frequently out there in the communities today. Um, something to note, and a lot of people will make this mistake when they're looking at the program or doing a review. When he talks about 80% max reps on this day, squat two on week two, it's 80% plus five pounds. So depending on how you run it into the sheets, if you don't know how to read the code, you might mess that up. So this is supposed to be the same weight plus five pounds that you're doing here. So there is a very slight progressive overload built into this week, which is kind of interesting. I don't see that a lot. I think that shows a lot of care and consideration for how Johnny was thinking about pushing and chipping up and increasing those weights throughout the entire cycle. Um, moving into the linear max overload training, you've got 85% plus five pounds for three sets of four to six reps. That's going to be a heavy day. Following that up, you got 87 and a half percent, two sets, less sets, but still a lot of heavy work at almost 90%. It's going to start to really tax CNS um, and really start to incur some fatigue here. Then you move into 85 plus 10 pounds for one set. Thank goodness. But hey, it's a heavy week. There's a lot of heavy stuff going on here. Then you really bring the volume down and that last uh, workout with the second deadlift. And notice for this week, no optional exercises. I pointed that out before, but I'll do it again. This week's focus is really about getting used to that heavy weight, getting above at or at 85 or above for your percentage. This is going to set you up for another heavy week where you're going to acclimate even further to really heavy loads. So 90% minus five pounds, 90%, and then 90 plus five, all for triples. Again, deadlift variation in there to help a little bit with recovery. Um, basically this protocol is almost going to show up again here for deadlifts. There's a slight deviation here where you're doing 90 plus five and then 95%, the highest percentage that you're going to see before the test week. This is a really heavy week. It's pretty low volume in terms of the total reps that you're doing, but still very taxing on the CNS. This leads into the high intensity strength week where you're going to have a single set of squats for the week. You're not doing any squatting, um, for that second workout. You're working up to 97.5% for one set of hopefully four. You get a four rep max with 97.5%. You definitely made some progress. Do the same thing here with deadlift, but there is a little bit of deadlift back off, or I would say uh, like rec active recovery volume here almost. Very low rep ranges with very low intensities. This is really just to keep your skill acquisition up. Now, my main issue with this is... When you're doing a really heavy squat here and it's the only squatting really that you're doing for the entire week, if you're gonna use the sixth week as a test week and it's not like till Saturday that you're actually gonna go in and have your meet, this is a long time to detrain. And it's the same thing I said for the bench press. Yes, in the test, you're going to have some, you know, light workouts, you should plan that. It's not written in uh, to the protocol, but you should have some touches. You should make sure that you don't detrain and lose your skill. And for most intermediates to hit something like this on a Monday and then not have another heavy squat all the way till a meet on a Saturday the next week, that's a long time. You probably don't need that much recovery. Now, if you're squatting like six or 700 pounds, sure, that could definitely be appropriate. But scaling your taper and, and making sure your peak lines up properly is something that I take a lot of time to think about. It's, it's present in Evolve AI, how long your peak and your taper is. It's definitely something you want to consider. And I feel like this is a little bit too much time. Moreover, the deadlift is even closer to when you would test because it's later in the week. 
I would flip flop those at the very first because deadlift does seem to take a little bit longer to recover from. I think that change alone might help this program out quite a bit. Um, just flipping these two days on week five might help you not detrain. Um, so that's one recommendation I'll make. The other is just looking at the stress index overall. And what I mean by stress index, uh, one unit of stress equals about one hard set. Think about like if you're doing one set at RPE eight to nine, or if you're RIR, you know, one to two RIR, that's what one unit equals. So 6.4 means you're doing like six and a half hard sets of squat, the equivalent amount of that stress on week one, deadlift 3.2. On week two, they're equal 7.8. Week three, you've got that reduction again. Week four, uh, again, more on the squat, less on the deadlift. Week five is the only time the deadlift is higher because you've got more work here and just you know the equal that you have there from that single set. It's a hard set though, don't get me wrong. It's, it's going all out, so it is gonna be taxing. What this leads to across the board is an average of about six and four for the weekly stress of squat and deadlift respectively throughout the program which is obviously 10 total stress average per week for your lower body compound movements. Again, if you add in the optional accessories uh, or optional exercises, depending on what exercises those are, that might uh, increase that number. Now, if you compare this with 531, it's gonna be five and a half, five and a half with uh, a total obviously of 11. Texas method, you've got 5.5 and six, if you count the power cleans or the snatches with equal stress. And honestly, you might wanna reduce that. It's probably maybe even more like three because those Olympic lifts are not gonna tax you in exactly the same way. The stress index is still, you know, it's still under uh, construction. Watch that video uh, that I put out about it for more info. But Mike Tashir has been working hard on that, trying to quantify those sets of stress. Tough to do when you're doing it with the Olympic lifts. So anyways, somewhere though, around a similar amount of stress, Starting strength is gonna be higher stress. You have such high frequency there, and you're also gonna be really grinding through some pretty heavy work as you move towards stalling out. Really depends what part of the linear progression you're in. Same thing with strong lifts, but one thing to note about strong lifts, oh my gosh, 1.5 to 10.5, just the fear of deadlifts is present there. Um, and that's something you see in a lot of those linear progression programs as deadlift slowly gets pulled out as you keep the squatting usually constant. What this tells me is that with this program, there's not a ton of total stress, especially here in the fifth week. It's very comparable or lower to other novice or intermediate programs. And beyond that, a lot of the weighting of the stress is earlier in the weeks. It really drops off. Same way with the bench press, if you watch the other video that I've done on this. And again, as I've said a couple of times already, my concern is about detraining going into the test. You might have a great training cycle and then fall flat at the meet because you haven't been keeping the workload high enough throughout that final part. You really want to chip that up. Apart from that, I really like the overall progression. I think this is a great way to get your feet wet and stair step in from a novice program into something approaching a normal block periodized macro cycle. Whether the flavor is block programming where the reps are the same or daily undulating periodization or wave, whatever it might be, I'm just talking about moving from a week or maybe a couple of weeks that repeat into something that's actually focusing on different abilities and it has a, a logic to it and an intention. It's clear that with what Johnny did in this program, he put a lot of time and attention into it. So as I said before, make sure you go to his website if you're gonna run this, consider giving him a donation. And I hope this helps you better understand the overall stress and the overall flow of this program. If you've tried this program, leave a comment below. Remember to hit the like button if you got to this point in the video, helps out a lot. If you're not subscribed, come on, come on, subscribe. All right, shameless YouTuber crying over here. Anyways, I hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.